Good evening, everyone. Praise the Lord. We are back again. Hallelujah. As we are waiting for people to log in, uh, we can be just praying and committing the, the hour into God's hands. We desire to have God's presence. We desire to have the Holy Spirit here with us. Hallelujah. As we waiting for people to come, we pray and we wait on God. Hallelujah. Thank you. The first one to come in, you are welcome. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whilst we are waiting, I just want to take you through and just talk a bit about the books that I have written. I've written quite a few books. I love the word of God. And I try to, to uh, put so much of the word in my books. And I just want you to, to encourage you to get hold of the books. They are very, very cheap for the purpose that I really am praying that many people will read the books because of what is in the books, not for any other reason. I, my last recent book that I wrote is called The Deception satan strategies exposed the deception satan strategies exposed this book you can find on the amazon if you go to the amazon and you put my name marika cox it all the books will come through you can get that from the amazon i have another that i've written on the mind you know, your mind is your greatest asset and you need to know how to take care of your mind. You know, in these days that we are living in, there's so much mental health issues. So much people are not coping and things are happening. People are taking their own lives. So that book will help you when you get to a time of pressure, when you are overwhelmed. It will help you to stay calm and to stay on board if you keep your mind healthy you will survive the toughest of times hallelujah i got another one on counseling godly counseling so if you got the time you can go on to um amazon put my name on the books will come out read them and and grow in the grace of god that's the whole purpose we just want to grow in the knowledge of our God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome everyone. Unfortunately, the way I set up today, I can't see your names as you're coming in. So I'm just going to welcome everyone in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us open and invite the Holy Spirit to come. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we, we just want to honor you this evening. We just want to bless your holy name, King of kings and Lord of glory. We thank you that, my God, your promises are yes and amen. We thank you, Father, that your word is true and heaven and earth will pass away, but your word will stand forever. Help us, Lord, grant us, my God, the ability mm -hmm. to understand your word this evening. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are looking at where is your dwelling place? Where is your dwelling place? Hallelujah. You know, we are here on earth, but where are we dwelling? Where are we dwelling? You know, most of us, we're waiting to get to heaven. We do not understand the importance of here, while we are here, while we are living here on earth, where are we dwelling? Now, Psalm 68, let's go to the book of Psalms 68. I'll read verse 6. Psalm 68, I'll read verse 6. God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who abound into prosperity, but the rebellious dwell in a dry land. God sets the solitary in families. He, sorts, he sets them in families. 
and yet the rebellious dwell in a dry land. For those who have been harmed by sin in their lives, God's desire is to make things right for them, is to make things better for them. God's desire is to cause them to prosper, is to cause them to come out and come into the Lord and enjoy the blessing of the Lord. That means you are being, you are moving out of one place of dwelling and coming into another place of dwelling. You are living out of one dark place of dwelling and coming into a place of dwelling where there's brightness, there's life, there's everything. So the Bible here says, he bringeth out those which are bound with chains. God delivers those taken captive by the wicked one. For this reason, the Bible says that he will be a father to the fatherless and a judge of the widows. So God, in his heart of hearts, he doesn't want us to wait to get to heaven, to live a good life, to be happy, to rejoice. No, he wants us to rejoice right here on earth where we are. Now, um, Psalm 68, I'll read verse 5. I read verse 6 first. Now, I go back to verse 5. It says, yet... He also withholds blessings from those who rebel against his will. So rebels will instead dwell in a dry land, bereaved of God's blessings. That's the sin, where sin dwells. The blessings of God are not there. Where sin dwells, where rebellion dwells, the blessings of God are not there. So what happens, you find yourself in a dry land. When you go to the book of Deuteronomy, it says that you will find that the heavens above you will be like iron and the, the earth underneath you will be like brass. So there's no rain coming and there's nothing growing. That's the dry place, the, wild, the desert place where we find ourselves wandering in the desert bereaved you know we have no blessing there is no blessing we are dwelling in a dry land and guess who else dwells in the dry places demons they dwell in the dry places some of you may have cast them out and say go back to the dry places where you belong and yet in those dry places they are people who are also dwelling in the dry places. They may not be aware of it. They may not know, but they are dwelling in the dry places. That's why they are prone to demonic oppression, demonic possession, and all these kinds of things, because they are dwelling in the place where demons dwell, in the dry places. Ephesians 2 verse 6. Ephesians 2 verse 6. Now we are looking at another place of dwelling. We've seen the first place of dwelling. We've seen the dry places where some dwell in dry places, the rebellious dwelling in, in, in dry places. But now there is another place where there are people that are dwelling there. In Ephesians 2 verse 6 it says, And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus I'm laying a foundation. So there you are. We have the dry places where the rebellious dwell. And then we have the heavenly places in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus where the righteous dwell. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The heavenly places in Christ is a spiritual realm. And the, will, the dry places, the desert places, the soulish realm, that's where the demons dwell. Now, Psalm 91, the first verse says, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High, 
He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. So that's why the question tonight is, where is your dwelling place? Where are you dwelling? Are you dwelling in the secret place of the Most High? Are you seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus? Or are you seated among the rebellious that are dwelling in the dry places? That's a serious question. That's something very serious to be considered. Now we need to understand a few things. Man is a spirit, has a soul, and lives in a body. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. Many Christians today have not yet experienced spiritual awakening, as it were. Everything that we have experienced within the church so far as has only affected our soul, the soulish realm, leaving the spirit man untouched. We have experienced the type of worship that is just around the soulish realm where we have enjoyed the singing just like the people in the world enjoy the singing but it did nothing for the spirit man god help me so that you can get what the spirit is saying you can get what i'm trying to express tonight that you know you can dwell in dry places you can dwell in heavenly places and it, it's very important that you are not living in the soulish realm if you are living in the soulish realm your worship is soulish your prayers are soulish everything you are doing is soulish what let me explain further we have Sometimes we pray and we are praying. Our prayers are all about me, I, and myself. Our prayers are all about the death of our enemies. Our prayers are all around the soulish realm. Even our worship is sad worship because it's all about us and what we want God to do for us. We never go deeper. So we are dwelling in the realm of the soul where the flesh and the soul are in unity they are in one they are in agreement and you dwell in that realm but when you break away from that realm you get to a different realm where you are dwelling in the secret place of of the most high where you are abiding under the shadow of the almighty where you are saying of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress what happens when you are dwelling in that place even your worship changes you know you don't just sing because the song is beautiful your worship changes because you have a greater insight it's no longer your soul that is singing it's no longer your flesh that is enjoying the song it is the spirit that is crying out to god like they say deep calleth unto deep your spirit cries out to god and that's the worship that jesus meant when he said in the last days the true worshipers the true worshipers will worship God in spirit and in truth. You are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. But most of the time, our soul and our flesh, they are very, very strong because we feed them. Whilst the spirit man is being starved, is being stifled, is, is being silenced to a point where the spirit man hardly has any say in whatever happens in our lives. That's when our conscience is dead. That is the, de the state of death that the world is in. That's why we say the world is dead in its sins. But sadly, there are people in the house of God who are in the same situation but religion has blinded their eyes that they do not recognize that they are dwelling in dry places this is the only reason why you find the people who are still demon possessed in the house of God despite the fact that they've been in church for so long they've been delivered so many times but they are still demon possessed because when they come out 
out of church, they go back to the dry places where they live. Where is your dwelling place today? Are you going out of church into the dry places or are you going out of church into the secret place of the Most High? Are you dwelling under the shadow of the Almighty or are you dwelling in the place where the rebellious are dwelling? There are no blessings there as we have seen. So, some of us have not experienced the genuine religion according to the word of God, the genuine gospel, sorry, according to the, the word of God. We have only experienced religion. Our worship has been religion. Everything we have experienced in church has been in the soulish realm and our spirit has not been touched by God. Our worship revolves around the soulish realm. Our sermons and teachings follow suit. Our gospel fails to transform our lives. It conforms people to a set of rules and methods of bettering oneself without the need for God's intervention. You know, when you are being taught that if you take one, two, three steps and do that, take five steps and do that one, those are methods that are helping you to do well for yourself without God in your life. And some of us have hearkened to those methods. People tell you, I wake up in the morning and I command my day and I get on by, or I wake up in the morning and I spray water everywhere, or I spray salt everywhere everywhere to chase away the evil spirits and I get by where is God in all of these things for the word says the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord I cannot order my day I cannot order my steps the steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord why because Jesus said those who are led by my spirit they are my sons and daughters so if you are being led by the spirit there's no way you're going to command your day how are you going to command your day because your day depends on the will of God your day depends on the plan of God your day depends on on where God wants you to be, what God wants you to do. I hope I'm making sense to someone this, this evening because we come so close to error when we begin to do, you know, when you have surrendered your life, you've given up everything. Like Christ, you say, Father, not my will, but your will be done. Then your day is planned by God. When God plans your day, God orders your steps when God orders your steps it doesn't matter if you find the Red Sea ahead of you and the army behind you and mountains around you as long as God led you to that place then you stand still and you see the salvation of your God but if you did it yourself you will cry and no one will hear you and calamity will come and you will be disappointed. Then you turn around and say, where was God when this and this happened to me? Where was God when that one happened to me? But God say, you left me behind and you ran your way because you prepared your own pathway. The Bible says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. So what has gone wrong? Why are we finding so many Christians, church-going people, living in dry places? What is going on? We have allowed the gifted and the talented to lead in the place of the anointed. I'm going back again to reinforce this truth. We exchange the anointing for talent and for gifts. Because why do we do that? Why is it so easy to swap the anointing for gifting and talent? You know, if I haven't got the anointing, what do I do? I find ways of entertaining you. As long as you are entertained, you're going to keep watching me. You're going to keep following me. 
Why? Because your soul is entertained, your flesh is entertained, you are very happy about it, but the moment you are challenged, you want to run away from it. You want to run away from it. I was saying on Sunday, I, I went to Africa for, for a holiday and they bought a goat to slaughter and I watched that goat three times running for its life. It did not want to die. And I was reminded of believers who do not want to die to self. They run with their lives. Every time God puts a finger, they run. When God is hard and trying to show you the truth, you probably won't log into my services again. Ah, that woman, no, she's too critical. Ah, that woman is too judgmental. And then you go and you listen to someone who is telling you what you want to hear but it's not going to transform you it's not going to challenge you to change and it's, you are going to go to hell sitting and listening and enjoying the things that you are listening to this is why Jesus said they will say but Lord I did this in your name and I did that in your name and he will say to them depart from me you workers of iniquity I never knew you because they did what they did. You know, it's so easy to preach to other people. You don't have to leave it yourself. You just preach it to the people. You manipulate the word. Make it exciting for those who listen to you. The more you know, they enjoy this. Every time I've talked about this, they've clapped loud. So you stick to that. It becomes your theme. It becomes what you are known to preach about. But what is about the rest of the gospel? We can't talk about God. God is love. God is love. We've got to tell you about the judge whom you are going to stand before one of these days. We got to tell you about the judgment throne. We got to tell you uh, we can't talk about the beauty of heaven, the streets of gold. We got to tell you about the fires of hell so that you are balanced in your understanding. You are balanced in your knowledge. Hallelujah. So why do we go for the easy way out? Because the anointing demands, the anointing makes demands on our lives. It makes demands. It demands a closer walk with God. It demands holiness without which we cannot see God. It demands righteousness, a price that many people are not willing to pay. Many people are not willing to pay the price to gain the presence of God in their lives. So it's much easier to go for gimmicks. It's much easier to operate in the flesh and appeal to the flesh, appeal to the soul of the man rather than to the spirit because anointing demands and yet the Bible is very clear. Only the anointing will break the yokes of bondage. Only the anointing will bring salvation. Only the anointing will change lives, transform people. So what happens then if we are in a place where our soul and our flesh is having fun, but our spirit man is dead? And then you happen to pass away. You happen to die the next day. Die in your your sleep get hit by a car catch COVID and die what happens to you then you have been going to church all your life but your spirit man has never ever been revived your flesh and your soul were the ones that were alive what happens then the anointing of God demands a, a closer walk with God. It demands a holy living. It, it demands righteous living. It's a price that we have to pray. It demands fasting and prayer. You know, we do not fast to get thin. We fast so that we put the flesh under. We fast so that the flesh is not having its way. We fast in order to deny the flesh of its desires so that the spirit man may take control, not the flesh. We feed the spirit and we kill the flesh. So we fast food. We fast sleep. When we pray all night and the flesh is weary and say, I want to sleep. And you say, no, you are praying. I want to eat. No, you are praying. 
If you do not believe me, try it and you will see how the flesh will react. It will start giving you headaches and then you say, I got a headache, I got to eat. Oh, my stomach is, is so, I got to eat. You know, it will do all kinds of things to avoid, to make sure you do not raise up your spiritual level. So we need to be able to understand that the anointing, there is a price to pay for the anointing. And that price is fasting, prayer, working close with God, living a righteous life, you know, being holy even as the Lord is holy. You, you reading the word of God, waiting on God, being patient, be suffering long and enduring all things. That's the price we pay for us to walk in the presence of God. For for us to be in the presence of God at all times. So, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We, rather than do what is right before God, we rather heap around us those who are talented to entertain us. They demand nothing from us except that we keep clapping our hands and keep locking back in again week after week. But what are we benefiting from it? What are you benefiting from it? What, what are you getting? Is your spirit man being fed? Is your spirit man growing? Is it drawing you closer to God? Are you finding yourself praying more? Are you now finding yourself with an interest to get into the word of God? Are you now in a position where you challenge your own way of thinking and you challenge the thoughts that go through you? Are you now in a position to say, hey, that is not right. That is wrong. I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't have said that. I, that shows that you are learning. You are growing. You are getting somewhere. You are growing in grace bit by bit. And guess what? God is taking notice. God is taking notice. You know, I look at what is happening around us today. And I say, no wonder Habakkuk said, I saw and I heard and was afraid. Revive your work in the midst of the years. I wonder what Habakkuk saw. I wonder what he heard. That terrified him so much when he saw in the midst of the years and he saw what was going to happen. But maybe Jeremiah can give us a hint of what Habakkuk was looking at. Jeremiah 2 verse 13 says, For my people have committed two evils, two evils. They have forsaken me, number one. The fountain of living waters to, to hew for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. Hallelujah. We forsake the Lord when we forsake the truth because God is truth. And Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When we reject the truth, when we forsake the truth, we are forsaking the Lord. We are forsaking the fountain of living waters and we are trying to drink from broken cisterns that hold no water in them. And this is so true. The broken systems, they represent our own efforts to attain salvation. Self-made attempts and schemes that are designed to find spiritual fulfillment apart from the will of God. That's what broken systems are. Self-made attempts, step one and two and step three and four. And then declare that and declare that one and then it will work. Outside of God, nothing works. These steps and these methods are doomed to fail because they were a failure from the beginning. We can do nothing without God. We can do nothing outside of God. Jesus said, I do nothing except that which my father tells me to do. Hallelujah. We cannot make it on our own. We cannot do it without God. Hallelujah. We can't. 
we can do it. I'll give you a list of scriptures you can write down to read at home. Write John chapter 4, verse 10 to 14. John chapter 4, verse 10 to 14. And John chapter 7, verse 37 to 38. You know, when you hear Jeremiah prophesying, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. I sense the heart, the father heart of God. You know, the Bible says God does not desire that any should perish, but that all should have eternal life. That God is weeping for the perishing. He is weeping for the lost. He is crying out when he looks at people and he says they are like a sheep without a shepherd. He is crying out. This is the father heart of God. He is calling out to his wayward children whom he loves very dearly. You have forsaken me and you have gone after broken systems that cannot hold water. They cannot give you life because life is in the Father. Outside of the Father, there is no life. I'm reminded one day when the, the, the followers of Jesus all turned back and Jesus said to the disciples, are you also going to leave? And Peter said, where can we go? You are the one who has life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except by me. Broken systems that make a lot of promises, but they are like clouds, empty clouds without water. And the heart of God is crying out because there are many children of God who are living in dry places, chased by demons every day. They can't sleep at night. They are dreaming snakes and, and lions. And everything is chasing them all night long till morning. Living in the dry land. Living in the dry land. For great peace of they that love the Lord. Great peace of they that love the Lord. There is no shortcut. There is no shortcut to the things of God. We do it God's way. Oh, we have nothing. In Isaiah 65, verse 8, we hear, just part of that verse reads, As soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. As soon as Zion, what? Travailed. There is no bringing forth of children without travailing. The pregnant woman cannot bring forth a child without labor pains. Nowadays, we know they do a C-section and take the child out, but we, we do call that unnatural birth. It's not natural. It's not the way God intended it to be. There's got to be labor. There's got to be travailing. As soon as Zion began to travail, she brought forth her children. When we begin to travail in the spirit, when the church begin to travail, to do what is right before God, to live according to the word of God, to follow. When the church begins to do that, then God will have his way. God will have his way. Hallelujah. Then we begin to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Without the work of the Holy Spirit, we cannot attain to the things of God. You know, you can have all the right steps. You can do everything you want without the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, without being guided and led by the Holy Spirit. You can do absolutely nothing. The Holy Spirit gives us purification and supports our spiritual maturing. You cannot mature without the Holy Spirit. He helps a person to become more closer to God. He is the one who draws us close to God. There is a process which we call sanctification. Without sanctification, we cannot grow. So the Holy Spirit helps us in that process 
of sanctification so that we can be sanctified day by day so that we can grow from grace to grace from glory to glory what does sanctification mean it simply means being set apart being set apart for god it is the holy spirit who helps us to set ourselves apart from god he teaches us the way he leads us he shows us what is right and what is wrong and the bible says i will lead the blind in the way that they have not known before for they shall hear a voice behind them saying this is the way walk in it if you cannot hear that voice then you are walking in your own will in your own way doing your own thing hallelujah the work of the Holy Spirit is very vital for our salvation. It is also very vital for our deliverance. But in the same way, it is vital for our sanctification. It is the work of grace that sets us apart as believers and separates us by the Holy Spirit so that we are separated unto God. We come out from the dry places. We come out from among them in the dry places and we walk with God. We walk with God. We walk with God. Hallelujah. Let me say right here that the church is not irrelevant. I'm not knocking the believers down. I am not knocking the church down. All I'm saying is that we must challenge one another to strengthen that which is weak among us. Jesus said to the church, strengthen that which remains, strengthen that which is weak, otherwise I'll come and remove your candlestick away. So we need to be awake, we need to be aware, we need to pull away, we need to draw closer to God. The more we draw closer to God, we are drawing further and further away from the dry places. Hallelujah. So, what is a motivational speaker? Hmm. What is the goal of a motivational speaker the ultimate goal for motivational speeches is seeking to spread new ideas and inspire a positive change to their listeners a positive change towards the new ideas which they bring it is a change in the mindset a change in the mindset. I'm telling you, they have come and they have preached to people about the water, the anointing oil, the water, and distorted what the Bible teaches on anointing oil. But because they were so convincing, they were so powerful, people believed and everybody bought the bottles of water. It was just merchandise. And everybody bought bottles of cooking oil. Merchandise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, thank you, Lord. The motivational speakers, they do not worry about the presence of God. They do not worry about anything. They just want you to change your way of thinking. Change your way of thinking. You can change your way of thinking to line up with the, with the wrong gospel, the gospel of I, me, and myself, the gospel of me being a little God, the gospel of me trying to make my own way without God. I don't need God anymore. I can do it my way. I found a method. I found a way of doing it. Jesus said there is only one way to the Father, and that is through the Son. There is only one way to heaven. It is through the cross of Calvary. It is through Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High God. You cannot go through any other way. So don't appeal to my soul. Appeal to my spirit, man. So 
So to be an accomplished motivational speaker, you need a range of skills which you can go and train for anytime you want. You, anybody can be a motivational speaker. You don't even need to believe the Bible. You just need to study it and know the right scriptures to use to manipulate people. If I want you to give me a million pounds today, I get the right scriptures. I go and train. I'll come here and talk and sweat. And by the time I'm done, I got a million pounds in my pocket. That's the agenda. That is the goal. But how many people are going into the kingdom of God? How many people are raising the dead? How many people are praying for the sick and their recovery? How many people are practicing even mustard seed faith because of the teachings, because of the preachings from the motivational speaking world? You can invest in being an amazing motivational speaker or you can invest in being an anointed servant of God. The choice is yours. Go to college, learn how to be motivational, come back and preach and the whole church follows you and they leave the pastor behind because this one has got the word. This one can preach. Where is the anointing? Where is the spirit of God? Ways repentance, ways transformation, ways change. I'm not saying everybody who is an, uh, an exceptional speaker is not of God. Do not get me wrong. There are plenty exceptional speakers in the kingdom of God. I'll take one. Billy Graham has always been my favorite. A man that brought the whole world to its knees. He preached very simple messages, no sugar coating, no nothing. He never appealed to the soul of a man. He appealed to the spirit man. He preached the pure gospel without compromise, without gimmicks, without anything. And he touched thousands of people, even watching from a screen without seeing his face. But he spoke about Calvary. He spoke, spoke repentance. He spoke heaven and hell and people heard why because the spirit of the lord god was upon that man just like the spirit of the lord god was upon jesus and when jesus spoke they say no man have ever spoken like this man and after jesus was gone and peter stood up to preach they acknowledged that this man had been with jesus hallelujah they acknowledge these fishermen have no education. They did not go for motivational speaking. They went to the school of Calvary. They went to the school of prayer. They watched the master pray day and night. And they say, teach us how to pray, master. And he taught them how to pray. He taught them how to walk in the ways of God. He says, blessed are the pure in spirit, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. He taught, he taught, he taught. And after he was gone, the spirit that was upon him was upon the disciples. And men recognized that these men, uneducated men, they've been with Jesus and they've turned our world upside down. Where are the believers today who are turning our world upside down? They are non-existent, including myself, because we are a product of of the preachers that preach to us. Hallelujah. You know, I go to the Old Testament, I go to the book of Acts, and I see men of God by whom his spirit of the Lord had descended upon. I see the passion, I see the power, I see the lack of compromise, I see the sacrifice, I see the suffering for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I look at my own life, and I look at others around me, and I don't see that, and I'm saying, God, help us in this generation 
And now I understand why Hapa Kuku was crying, revive your work in the midst of the years. For in the midst of the years, the gospel has lost its power. The gospel lost its incense because it has been compromised slowly. The devil has been chipping away slowly, slowly over the years that there is very little left. But we need to rise up now. We need to restore. We need to restore that which we have lost. We need to rise up. We need to take this Bible before it disappears from the marketplace. We need to take it and hide it in our heart like David say thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you the Bible as we know it will not be in the market for long yes the book will be there but it won't be the same book it will be a changed book some some verses are missing some has been retranslated to mean what they never meant before so we need to get hold of a, a right Bible. We need to read. We need to know. We need to put the word in our hearts that even when we do not have the paper, when no one can take the word that is written in my heart. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God loves his church. He cares for his people more than his people realize. Our God is love. He is compassionate patient and great in mercy he does not desire that anyone should perish but that all may have eternal life hallelujah jeremiah 29 i'm about to finish jeremiah 29 verse 11 god says for i know the plans that i have for you hallelujah what plan are you following today your plan or God's plan? God says, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Hallelujah. That's why the people who dwell under the shadow of the Almighty, they enjoy the blessings of God. Because the plan of God is to prosper. Remember Psalm 68 verse 6. God sets the solitary in families. He brings out those who are bound into prosperity. When he delivers you and he sets you free. He brings you in the land of plenty. No wonder David said, the Lord is my shepherd Ha! I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. That's what the God that we serve. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. He anoints my head with oil, prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Hallelujah. He is the great God. He is the lover of your soul. He does not desire for you to perish. He wants you to know that he cares for you, that he has a good plan for you. But you have to lay down your own plan. You have to lay down Satan's plan for your life. You have to put down the deception. You have to say, God, I'm laying down my plan. I'm laying down the enemy's plan. I'm laying down every other agenda. I want to take the plan that you have for my life. For I know it's a good plan. It's a plan to prosper me and not to harm me. It's a plan to give me hope and to give me a future. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You cannot walk this journey alone. You cannot do it on your own. You will never make it on your own. You don't know where heaven is. You do not know the way to go. You need someone to direct you. You need someone to take you there. You need someone to guide you there. You need someone to lead you there. You cannot do it on your own. Jesus said, I will not leave you like orphans. 
No, no, no. I will send you the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. When he has come, he will guide you into all truth. Hallelujah. He will take from what is mine and give it unto you. We need that spirit of truth. We need to embrace the spirit of truth. We need to reject the spirit of, of lies. We need to reject the spirit of this world. We need to reject it and remove it scales from over take away the wool that has been thrown over your face and say no i want god's plan for my life because it's a good plan and i want to challenge anyone who is striving anyone who has had one strife after the other one issue after the other one problem after the other anyone who can agree and say yes lord i am dwelling in a dry place yes lord now i understand why i've been dwelling in a dry place but i'm coming out of this dry place i'm coming out of this dry place by the grace of god take me out lord i'm saying yes lord i want out yes lord i want your will yes lord i want the plan that you have for my life i want to surrender everything to you the bible says it's not by power nor by might but it's by my spirit saith the lord not by power not by might but by my spirit you can't do it by your own power it doesn't matter we say there's power in the tongue yes but the kind of power in the tongue that's going to move mountain is going to be the kind that is faith in the mount moving jesus mountain moving jesus it's the kind of tongue that believes that's the power that the tongue has there is no other power not by power not by human power not by human might but by my spirit saith the lord hallelujah the lord is saying the battle is not yours the battle belongs to the lord that's why great peace have they that love the lord when i have a battle yes i'll panic and then i'll quickly tell myself hey 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 the battle is not mine the battle belongs to the lord lord fight the battle on my behalf i'm waiting for my victory i'm waiting for my victory for the lamb will overcome he has done it before he will do it again the lamb will overcome on my behalf why because my father has a good plan for me a plan to prosper me a plan to give me a hope and a future I hope I'm talking to someone out there tonight. I hope I'm motivating you. I am challenging you to say enough is enough. I've been in this hellhole for too long and I want out. I want out. The Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the book of Psalms says, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him and delivered him out of all his troubles. How many poor men are out there? Cry out to the Lord like the blind Bartimaeus. Cry out to the Lord. He will hear you. He will deliver you out of all your troubles. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, we also need to know that God does not force anyone into the kingdom. He is a gentle God. He waits on you to make the choice. He will never bulldoze you. He will never force you into the kingdom. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. That's my last scripture. It says... This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. What will you choose today? Life in the dry land or life in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus what will you choose today the choice remains with you it is your choice choose whatever you want to choose 
If you want to remain where you are, it's your choice. If you want to get out of it, all you have to do, go on your knees and call on his name and say, Lord, I want out. I want to come out of this dry place and I want to be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. It is such a glorious thing. You know, I can see, you know, the first martyr Stephen lifting up his eyes while they were stoning him and the heavens open and he's saying, oh, the heavens are open for me. I can see the Lord high and lifted up. You know, it's a glorious thing to walk with God. It is such a sad thing for you to spend your life in a church or around believers and not make it into the kingdom or not have ever an experience of the glory of God, of the beauty of the kingdom of God, of the peace that comes to your heart when Jesus comes into your heart for he is the master of peace oh he is peace itself when he comes oh my goodness the peace that comes upon you surpasses all understanding there is nothing like the peace of God hallelujah I just want to leave you with these challenging words and I also want to challenge you to send this to someone just pass this on before we log out. Just send it to as many friends as you know, as many people as you know. You know, the word of God is like a seed. We scatter it. It will fall into the right hands. Someone out there is going to receive it. My prayer before we started, I was weeping because I just received words of a young relative from South Africa who's taken overdosing medication. You receive words of people who are dying. And my cry to God was, Father, may we reach some of these people with the word right there before they take their lives. May we save them from the fires of Gehenna. May we turn them around in the last moment before they tip over. So you become part of the preaching of this gospel. The more people you give this word, the more souls you are bringing into the kingdom. You may not have the ability to teach, but surely you have a finger to click send. You have a finger to click share. You can share the gospel with other people we are so good at sharing gossip you are so good at you know we we get hold of a clipping of a stupid nature and we say let it go viral and we send it viral go 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 but when it comes to the word of god we receive it we switch off and we close down we never tell anybody we never send it to anyone we never push it forward check i challenge you let us labor together in the vineyard you send it to the people that you know and together we shall win some souls out there may the lord bless you let us pray father in the mighty name of jesus we want to thank you my god for your faithfulness Lord, you have been faithful to us Monday after Monday. You have been faithful, Father. You are investing into our lives. And we are praying, my God, that we are growing, that we are maturing, that we are receiving the word with gladness in our hearts, Lord. And that, Father, one day we are going to meet in heaven and say, we were together in the spirit when you were preaching this word. I listened, and today we are together praising God. And Father, I pray for every single person who is in the dry place right now, who is crying and saying, Father, I'm coming out. I want out. Lord, open the floodgates of heaven. Remove them from the dry place and place them, my God, into watered ground. Take them, lead them into greener pastures, lead them beside the still waters that they may know you are a good shepherd. And Father, every cry, let it be heard in heaven and respond according to mercy and according to grace in Jesus' mighty name. For your name's sake and for your glory, we give you all the praise, the glory and the honor. Amen. May the Lord bless you as you share his word. We'll meet again next week. 
Don't forget, go to Amazon, get yourself a book, start reading and educate yourself. It will help you to understand the word of God better. Amen. And God bless those who are joining us for prayer. We are rushing to go to the prayer forum. Praise the Lord.